Covington. My after 11 guest tonight is a very determined young man. Barney Lee is 19, he's from Derbyshire, but tonight he's in Essex and he's walked all the way there. You realise how determined he is, and I tell you that he's not only walked all the way, but he has a condition that causes numbness, tingling and muscle weakness in his limbs. He's been trekking for 25 days and he's still walking, and he joins me on the programme tonight. So, Barney, thank you very much indeed for joining me on the show tonight. No problem at all. It's good to be here. So, uh, well, you're in Essex, still in Essex. Whereabouts in Essex are you? Do you know exactly where you are? I'm in Great Wakering at the moment. Okay. And I know, you it's, know been a, it it's been a particularly long day for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been, it's been one of my longest, about 38 kilometres, which translates to like 24 miles. Wow. I think. Wow. So, yeah. so I suppose I have to ask you, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? So I'm walking around the entire coastline of mainland Great Britain. Uh, and I'm doing that to uh, create awareness of a genetic condition that I have, which is called HNPP. And uh, HNPP stands for um, hereditary neuropathy with liability to pressure palsies. I've got a slight spiel on what it is, uh, which I'll just say now. Yeah, go for uh, it. HMPP is a degenerative nerve and muscular condition that causes nerve damage leading to numbness, muscle weakness, and temporary paralysis. And it affects up to 1 in 2,500 people. And there is currently no cure and no treatment option. So this entire walk is to generate awareness for that and funding for research. So when did you first get symptoms then? Uh, so I've had symptoms all through my life, not really knowing where they were coming from. Uh, just thinking they were normal things, but beginning to realise that they're not normal over time. Uh, so one of the early onset symptoms I give an example of is, so for example, writing. I'd write half a page and my hand would start to hurt uh, after, say, half a page. Um, and then I'd ask my friend, oh, is your hand hurting? Are you all right? Um, and they're like, yeah, it hurts a little bit. But whereas in, I'm in excruciating pain and they're like saying, oh, yeah, it hurts a little bit. Um, so I just think there's nothing wrong. Hmm. So because my mum's got the condition, talking to her about it, she one of the signs. But then fast forwarding into the future, bigger things are happening, like I'm waking up with my hands paralyzed, um, not being able to turn off my alarm, and it being like a club and me hitting the alarm and uh, hoping that it'll turn off, but then it doesn't. And 10, 15 minutes later, my hand starts to work again, but it's very weak. And uh, I had to call in sick for work because I couldn't use my hand. So when did you finally get the diagnosis then of uh, HNPP? Uh, it was about six months ago now, I think. I had the symptoms and the signs. I was pretty sure I had it. I didn't want to be initially diagnosed. I didn't want to be labelled with it. Um, but I finally came to the conclusion that I'd be diagnosed to make sure it wasn't anything else. Um, and they did a genetic test, and it turns out that I do have it. When you finally get a diagnosis with something like that, and as you say, it's something your mother lives with, so you're aware of it, what's going on inside your head then, Barney? Well, the, nothing can be done about it, and it's just going to get worse. Uh, my mum's not in the best state with her health, with the condition. She can't drive for very long. She can't walk very far. Sometimes she can't get out of the house. Um, yeah, she's in not a great shape with the condition, quite disabled with it. Um, so seeing my future um, and there being nothing I can do about it makes me feel powerless. Um, and the potential that my kids could have the condition, that people around the world are suffering with it, the horrible debilitating condition where they're not able to even take care of themselves, some people. Um, I just want to do something to make a difference and potentially make a difference and change my future, my kids' future, um, and other people's futures by raising awareness um, so that more people are diagnosed. And with more people being diagnosed, that means that medical companies take notice because there's more of a profit margin in uh, developing a cure for them. So, in everyday life now, and I know this is part of your, uh, you walking, what you're doing now, but how does it affect you on a, on a daily basis? 
on a daily basis. Yeah. So it, it's difficult to tell sometimes at the moment uh, what's normal walking pain and what isn't. Um, because I'm having experiences with my body in terms of walking, like my feet hurting, blisters and, and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that I'm noticing that's to do with the condition is that I, I've been getting numbness in my hands and my shoulders uh, from doing the walking, uh, which is a sign of uh, damage uh, in the body. Um, also, one morning I woke up in my tent. Um, both my hands were paralyzed. Both my arms were completely numb. And I just lay there thinking, what am I going to do? If they don't come back soon, I won't be able to pack down my tent. I won't be able to take care of myself. Uh, thankfully, after like 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, they came back and started working a bit. But they were quite weak and fragile at that point. Uh, and I managed to pack down the tent and carry on with the day. And um, My hands started working fine later on in the day. Um, but then damage is obviously done, which then means next time it'll be worse. Uh, and my uh, arms remain numb for the rest of the day. So that's one of the things that has happened along the way. And how much pain are you in? Oh, pain. It, well, it can, it can vary. It can vary from... So the condition's on a spectrum. So for me, it's very early onset, can, onset for me because I'm so young. I'm only 19. I've not been on this earth so long. So it's not taken... It's not done as much damage to me yet. Um, but it's uh, progressive in its nature, so it only gets worse. So for me, myself, most of the time I'm not in that much pain, but I, I, I'm in pain when I'm doing certain activities. So, for example, I was a landscape gardener and um, a plumber, um, but then being very laborious physical tasks, um, which require a lot of gripping and using your body and arms and things like that, I found that, like, just simple things like using a screwdriver... Maybe at the start of it, when I started out, I'd be able to do it for, say, like half an hour using a screwdriver, doing all sorts of stuff. But then as time progressed, I was only able to use it for like for five minutes before my hand would seize up and uh, would stop working and I wouldn't be able to even grip a thing. Um, and that's a very painful thing. So for me, it's not painful all the time, but if I stop doing things, like with my hands or with my body, then it can become quite painful very quickly. What's the medication for this? You, you say there's no cure for it, but there surely is medication for uh, easing the pain, I'm thinking. Um, there is some condition for the pain, but it's not really a solution and it's not really a treatment option. Um, lots of people find that the painkillers don't work for the pain. You end up just getting on stronger and stronger medication, which is not a solution at all. Um, and, yeah, it... There's no real treatment options. and But, yeah, you can get on stuff for the pain. Uh, I'm not on any of the stuff for the pain. I don't really like taking painkillers and stuff myself. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Barney, let's just catch our breath here just for a second if we can. I need to break here for some music, but we'll come back in a few moments' time and talk about the walk you are currently on. And we'll do that in a few moments' time on Lane Night Grand Torrington. BBC Radio Derby. Right, it's Lena Graham Torrington. I'm talking to Barney Lee, who's been walking almost non-stop for the last 25 days. So, where did the idea of the walk come from? Well, there's like a short answer and a long answer. I'll go with the shorter version. Um, so, I, I like challenging things in my life. I like setting myself a challenge, com competing, uh, being competitive and all that kind of stuff. I also love the outdoors um, and all that stuff. So I thought, why not walk from Land's End to John O'Groats or something like that? I like walking. I like a challenge. Um, and I thought, well, loads of people have done that, and it's only going to take me like three months. Um, well, why don't I do something a bit bigger? Um, and I thought, well, I could walk around the coast of mainland Britain not realising that anyone had done it before or if anyone had attempted it and not realising quite how long it was at the time. Uh, so I thought, let's, let's go for this. Let, let's do this thing. Um, and I thought, what can I do with this? Because it's such a big feat. It's such a big thing. I should do something with it to, that I'm passionate about. And the condition HMPP that I've got, there's currently no treatment options and no cure. And what better way to raise awareness uh, by connecting it to this thing 
uh, which then will generate lots of awareness and really, really boost the profile of the condition. So, you started in Derbyshire 25 days ago? So, I'm from Derbyshire and I started in um, Mablethorpe uh, okay. in Lincolnshire on uh, August the 10th. And just tell me quick, briefly the route you've taken so far then. Ah, uh, I've been through so many places, all the names get jumbled up in my head a bit. Okay, uh, so, so from I've, Mablethorpe, uh, yeah? Yeah, Mablethorpe, then I uh, ended that day in Skegness. I wiggled all the way around the coast and then around the wash, um, which is actually mostly private land, but farmers seem to be all right with me walking on it, except for one farmer, which wasn't so happy. Um, <laughs> so I got up his land quite sharpish. Um, yeah, so I walked around there, then it was all around North Norfolk, uh, and then coming round like, past Sandringham, uh, then all the way around, and then down to Suffolk. And then I've taken a few ferries, because there's, in terms of doing the coastline of Britain, it's quite difficult, actually, because there's a lot of places that you need to come in quite far for a bridge. I'm not, I can't swim across all the rivers. That would be silly. I'm drowning or something with my back on. Um, so my rule is I take the first available transportation across the river, whether that's the first footbridge or the first ferry. So there's been a few ferries around, and then I got into Essex. I'm walking around to Essex, and now I'm in a great wakery. So, uh, you were doing this by yourself, or is, are you, do you have some support with you? Um, it is pretty much a solo expedition. Um, I do have friends and family occasionally coming to join me. I've had a few people come walk with me. Uh, a guy called Chris, I think, came and walked with me. Uh, and a woman called Mandy came and walked with me. So I've had a bit of company on a few days. And some people have come down and taken me out for meals, and I've met so many amazing people on this journey. That's what I was going to say. What have you met and seen so far that's really stuck with you so far? Well, it's just the the kindness and just how amazing strangers are. I mean, you look on the news, and the world isn't the best place, it seems. But it seems like everyone's out to get you, and it's sort of dangerous and that. Actually going out and experiencing the world and meeting people and walking through areas, you just get to see just the kindness and the generosity of people. So for one example, I was having a terrible day uh, around the wash area. It had rained from the moment I packed down my tent all day. I was in full waterproofs, but I may as well not have been. I was so soaked um, and I was in a bit of a state. I was really, really tired. And at the end of the day, I got to a pub. Uh, it's on uh, Sutton Bridge, I think it's called. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I went to a pub called Riverside Pub, and I walked in, and it all just went deadpan silent. There's this guy stood there, stoking, looking like he's about to collapse. Maybe he's going to cry, and he's got this massive backpack on. Uh, so you could just see all the questions going through their their heads and they were asking me all these things, what's going on? And then someone was like, oh, I'll get you a pint. The guy's me a pint, never met the person before. Um, then they are, then once I've finished that, they all try and lift up my bag and they're all talking about what I'm doing. And then some people just donate randomly after I say what I'm doing. I've not asked at all and they just donate towards it. Uh, and then someone else buys me a pint, and someone buys me some food. I'm not asking for this stuff. They're just being really welcoming, really kind. One of them offers me a bed for the night um, and gives me his number and says, if you need any help in a 50-mile radius of here, just give me a number. They just call me and I'll come, which is just amazing. The generosity of people is unbelievable, isn't it? It really, really is. How much planning have you had to do? Because you say people are offering you beds, uh, etc., but... Uh, do you kind of know from day to day where you're going to be sleeping that night or do you just stumble on somewhere? So it's a variety of things. So before I left, so I've got um, a website and a Facebook page and an Instagram page. Uh, I'll just say what, what they are now. So the website is uh, barneyleague.co.uk. I've got a Facebook page called My Long Walk Around Britain and an uh, Instagram page called My Long Walk 365. Um, and on the social media sites, so I've... Um, Put out, please, really, if anyone knows anyone who lives on the coast and is willing to put up me <laughs> uh, for a good cause, uh, then please get in touch. And 
the most random connections have happened. There's been like ex teachers, aunties, cousins, and things like that, and uh, just really string like string of connections. And people have gotten contact and just put me up. But yeah, there have been days um, where I've not known where I'm going to stay. Like the other day, I was on Burnham on Crouch, I think it's called. Um, and I just missed the ferry by 10 minutes. And my plan was to camp on the other side, just randomly out the way. Um, and, yeah, I didn't make the ferry. I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I I was so close to tears because I was so tired. And my body was in pain and everything. I walked into a pub. I explained my situation. Well, someone just offered to buy me a pint straight away, which is really nice. So... That was nice. And then uh, a guy called Gary was like, oh, I'll sort you out. Uh, he goes off. Um, I don't really know what, what he means. And then he comes back a bit later and says, oh, I've, uh, I've got you a place in a hotel. Uh, enjoy. Wow. And oh, fantastic. It just put me up there, which is really nice. Yeah. Barney, what's been driving you on? What's been driving me on? Um, I guess, one, the determination to complete the task. Um, the support of people, people commenting on posts and, um, yeah, just all the encouragement that people are sending me. People are sending me personal messages and people are calling me up along the way. The people I meet along the way are just so amazing. And I've had, so from some radio interviews and some posts on Facebook, they've got the people who have the condition and haven't really known anyone else, particularly with the condition, or have only just had it, or have got symptoms of the condition. And they've sent me emails basically explaining their struggle, and we've just really just gone back and forth on talking about it and our experiences with it, and just showing people that they're, they're not alone, and that there's loads of other people who have it out there, um, and yeah, just giving them the support that they need. You talk about lots of people being there, but there must be a lot of lonely hours as well. What's been going through your head during those lonely hours whilst you've been walking, sleeping? Well, I guess it's just kind of been, I don't know, one foot in front of the other. And sometimes it's just been a, a dull trudge and my head's just kind of gone into nothing and not really been thinking because it's all just kind of been a trance. Um, but yeah, in that situation, I, I, I feel that time with, I don't know, I listen to some music, I've got some audio books I'm listening to, um, and yeah, and I have phone calls with people, have conversations with people I meet along the way, but there have been a few days where I've seen all of, like, one person in the distance, uh, which has been quite lonely, but yeah, they're few and far between, thankfully. When I get round to Scotland, I'm sure there'll be quite a few more of them, but yeah. Barney, what have you learned about yourself during this time? I've learned that I've, uh, I'm more resilient than I thought. Um, this, I'm a guy that uh, two years ago, I was uh, terrified to get on a train to, from Derby to Lincoln where there's one change. Uh, <laughs> there's one change in that, and I was terrified to go alone doing that, and now I'm doing this. Uh, to meeting random people, uh, having to judge character, um, going to some random people's houses that I've never met before, um, just having to just negotiate life. Just I've just become so much more resilient and i found that I am capable of what I set my mind to and that life can be so much richer than uh, we let it be. And if we give it chance, it can be the best thing ever. Well, we wish you all the very best, Barney. Thank you very much indeed for joining me on the programme tonight. What we've done is we've posted on my Facebook page uh, all the details that you talked about there. So if somebody would like to donate, rather, uh, or follow your progress, uh, they can go to my Facebook page and follow all the links there. Barney, I wish you all the very, very best for the onslaught that's going to be coming up, and I know you're going to get there. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Stop. A great thing that uh, Barney's doing there. If you'd like to see a picture of Barney and uh, you'd like maybe to follow the links of... Uh, uh, maybe he's trying to raise some money, as, you, as he was talking about there, and you would like to donate. If you go to my show page on Facebook, which is Late Night Graham Torrington, uh, you get all of the details there. And he's got a heck of a long way to go, so I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, over the next couple of months or so, we'll catch up with Barney from time to time to see exactly how he's doing. And uh, maybe you, uh, you just want to spend a bit of time with him. Uh, he's there, he's available, so just uh, check him out, as I said. If you go to my show page on Facebook, you get all of the details there. 
and another After 11 guest tomorrow night on the show.